Good morning. This is Kelly Land on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. We are hearing from a South Dakota lawmaker since she was stripped of her duties in the state Senate over allegations of inappropriate behavior. Rapid City Republican Julie Fry Mueller held a news conference Saturday to defend herself in the aftermath of her Senate colleagues voting last week to take away her voting privileges and committee assignments. Senate Republicans received a report from a Legislative Research Council staff member alleging that inappropriate behavior and harassment related to private maternal mat matters, including childhood vaccines and breastfeeding, during a conversation at the state capitol. Fry Mueller told her constituents from District 30 that the staffer was seeking her advice and that she shouldn't be suspended for a private conversation. I had all my rights stripped. All of them. So wrong. No, no, so wrong. Yeah. To date, I have still not received any formal written complaint, but I look forward to the opportunity to a fair hearing and the opportunity to defend myself against accusations that may be alleged. The state Senate will meet today to decide upon rules for the committee looking into Fry Mueller's alleged actions. Kelly Lance, Dan Santella, along with our Capitol News Bureau reporter Bob Mercer, will be in peer for team coverage of today's developments. Look for their stories on air and online. Meanwhile, the South Dakota Freedom Caucus, made up of Republican lawmakers, is echoing Fry Mueller's point about not receiving a written complaint. The Freedom Caucus issued a statement over the weekend calling for Fry Mueller to have her legislative duties restored until the Senate takes action on the matter. The Freedom Caucus says Fry Mueller has not received due process and that her constituents have been deprived of their rightful and chosen representation. The Freedom Caucus says the group doesn't know whether Fry Mueller is guilty or innocent, but says no evidence of wrongdoing has been publicly made available. And Governor Kristi Noem has yet to make herself available to the media covering the Capitol during the first three weeks of the state's legislative session. It breaks with a decades-long tradition of South Dakota governors holding a weekly news conference to publicly discuss their policy initiatives and take questions from reporters. Noem is a potential presidential candidate in 2024. She has granted numerous TV interviews to national news outlets, but she has not personally taken questions from local reporters covering the legislature. This full story is on Kelloland.com right now. Now let's send it over to meteorologist Scott Munt for a look at this morning's weather. Good morning, Scott. Well, good morning there, sir. Good morning, everybody. Uh, cold day. In fact, uh, cold temperatures this morning. Numbers easily below zero. In fact, in the 20s below in western South Dakota, there will be some areas that do struggle to get above zero. Watertown, Worthington may struggle to get above zero today. We are looking at mostly sunny skies. We'll have numbers in the teens in central and western South Dakota. Brian will have more details on your forecast coming up. All right, thank you very much, Scott. Well, calving season is underway, and with the cold weather come some challenges. Jared Werning has just begun calving on his operation. With the cold temperatures, he makes sure to check the cattle more often and get them inside to calve to avoid consequences of the cold. Obviously, frostbite, um, you know, just the calves, you know, once they're born, they're warm for a little while. So. As the mother's licking them off, you might have a few minutes to where you could get them in and be all right. But it's just, you know, just try to be diligent and, and make sure to always be watching, especially this week. And Morning will finish calving in the middle of April. A Rutland High School senior is recovering after a bout with an illness landed him in the hospital for over a week. Caden Garrels is a three-sport athlete for the Oldham Ramona Rutland Raiders. He would have been playing in a basketball game Tuesday, January 17th, but an illness kept him at home. He was found unresponsive the next day and ended up at Sanford. The family is still left without answers. I just remember having the flu, and then the next thing I'm in the hospital breathing out of a breathing tube, you know, and I was, I was just so confused at first. And his doctor, the genetics doctor, said, you know, some, there's like a one in three chance that this is an isolated incident. And it doesn't, you know, and there isn't really an answer. It's, you know, he was fighting off something. And even if we couldn't find what exactly what it is, it, his body responded the way it did. Caden is out of the hospital and home now, and he will have more therapy appointments on the road to recovery. If you'd like to be part of a beanbag tournament or silent auction fundraiser for him, you can find more information attached to this story on Kelloland.com. We are hoping to learn more information about an apparent roof damage at a Northwest Iowa community center. 
In several posts on Facebook, the city of Inwood said no one was hurt. The city is asking residents to stay away from the community center as they clean up. Officials add that the library and community center are closed until further notice. Kids can wait for the school bus inside the post office if needed. We have reached out for more information and are waiting to hear back. Stay with Kelloland News on air and online for updates as they become available. And that's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one final look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Karstens. Good morning, Brian. All right. Good morning, guys. Good morning, everybody. We do have wind chill advisories in effect for much of Kettle Land this morning. Wind chill warnings in the far northeast where the numbers are a little colder, running from Aberdeen to Sisseton. Bottom line, though, is that, yeah, with these Arctic fronts, we just have to kind of endure these spells of cold. And this is kind of a really more typical what we would see in late January. So those numbers today, Sioux Falls, yep, running just a couple degrees either side of zero. I would say Aberdeen is probably close to that. Pier, you'll do a little better today in the teens. Even Rapid, I would expect we'll be able to bounce back and hopefully get to uh, the mid-teens later for a high. Tonight, not quite as chilly in the west. That's some good news. Sioux Falls, though, could drop to 10, maybe 11, 12 degrees below zero by daybreak. Clouds will dictate some of that. Uh, we expect Aberdeen, too, will be plenty cold in the teens below zero. Tomorrow, a couple highlights. Pier could jump back to the 20s. Even Rapid City might cl be close to 30. Sioux Falls, if we can make 10 degrees tomorrow, yeah, it's a little bit better. Okay, so Arctic air, while it is the big story to start the week, it starts to break up a little bit. Not to say, you know, going into late Thursday or early Friday, there's a little front that's going to sneak in here. We may have to doctor up some of the temperatures there for a brief period of time, maybe slip a little bit. But then everything seems to be on board for some moderation for the weekend. Well, if you've got a lot of snow on the ground, like Sioux Falls, probably meaning highs maybe in the 30s or near 30. If you're in Rapid City, you could get to 50 by Sunday. And awfully close there by uh, even Saturday's forecast. Beyond that, we'll see how the fronts line up next week. But as of right now, we can kind of take the week off as far as big snows and all of that talk. That's not in the outlook. Today, sunshine, that's helpful too. Uh, we've got 4 degrees in Mitchell, 3 degrees in Huron, 14 in Pier. Lows tonight uh, below zero. Huron about 10 below. Brookings 13 below. Sioux Falls 12 below zero tomorrow. Well, those teens along the James Valley, you've got a few 20s in the central. Rapid could uh, pop up to 35. I would kind of hold in the teens through the middle part of the week. We'll see if we have to adjust Thursday or Friday just a little bit lower to account for a cold front. But then if we get to 30 on Saturday, that sounds very good. And uh, folks needing a little break on winter, this looks like a good week to see at least some better conditions at the end of the work week. Aberdeen, the same idea as Sioux Falls. We might have to drop a little bit Thursday, Friday as we continue to analyze the strength of that front. Otherwise, the pier forecast by Saturday and Sunday is close to 40. So that's definitely working some warmer numbers. And anybody that's, you know, got the, just a couple inches of snow on the ground or lower, we're going to do really well with this pattern. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all is a green light for Rapid City to being back to some pretty mild numbers in the upper 40s and low 50s. Check out more details with your forecast online at keveland.com.